it's time to deal with the rear seats of the bus. So as you can see, the back seat clearly is not the seat that is supposed to go on our 73 bus. And this middle seat frame looks like it might be correct, but we're not going to do a middle seat in here. So we're going to get rid of those two seats and put in a rock and roll bed seat. We bought the uh, rock and roll bed seat frame from CIP1. The instructions are pretty garbage and we got to figure out how to put all this together. So yeah, that'll be fun. All right, so on the front rod, I grinded these faces down so I have the bare metal. Grinded that bare metal down so I get a nice little tack there. So a couple of these little swedge nut plates did not get swedged in there properly, so. We're going to mark all these and come back and weld them once it's fully assembled. Just a little W to remind us to weld it. All right, so these little fold-out feet that are supports, this little overhang here gets stuck on this cross arm. So I'm gonna go ahead and grind that down flush on uh, both sides. So after fighting this forever and trying to get this to line up and pull out properly, we realized these side beams actually need to be perfectly aligned. So if you torque these down without spacers, uh, the bed won't unfold correctly. So the kit did come with a ton of extra washers. So those need to go in there and keep those uh, bars you know, in line with each other. So what I'm gonna do right now is grind down and actually weld the rest of this frame together so it's rigid and straight, and then go ahead and reassemble it. All right, so all the welds are finished and cleaned up the best they can be right now. I'm just going to leave it all scraped up and scratched now because, again, this is temporary. We'll take this out and we're going to repaint it when we do the actual upholstery later. So we're going to finish assembling now and add the washers to put spacing between all the joints so it lines up nicely and then solid, and then we'll throw it in the bus. So it might be kind of hard to see, but on the top bracket, this is the backrest. We put three washers in there as a spacer. At the base of it, we did no washers between it. And then at this center hinge, we did one spacer between the outside beam and the hinge, and then two spacers in the middle of the two hinges. Um, it depends on the spacing you do on the seat and backrest, how this is gonna play out for you, but you're gonna have to do something like this to keep the whole thing in line so it opens and closes nicely. Alright, so I got the backing cut to size. It's a little bit wide on the edges, so I'm going to mount this with threaded inserts so we can take it on and off once the cushions are on it, so it'll be pretty permanently affixed. So I'm going to go ahead and match drill that, put those inserts in, and I'm going to belt sand it so it's flush to the frame, and then we will foam and upholstery it.
Hey, okay, now it's loosely reassembled. We have the plywood on the back, and that's so we can test what's in there to get the mounting points on it. So we have the right thickness we know to line up with the back of the engine compartment. So now we're going to go fight this sucker inside the bus and mark the mounting locations for it. All right, so we put the bed in there and I marked where we need a drill for the holes to go through. And I went under and measured to make sure it clears everything. So I'd be careful that back wall, the fuel tank's right there, but that first slope area pretty much clears it. So we're good there. And then on the base, you wanna make sure it doesn't run into the frame just so that we can actually get a bolt to the back side of it. So it all clears. So we're gonna drill those holes now, size up and put the mounts in. So we got the foam cut to match with the backer board and now we're going to use some spray adhesive to attach the two before we do our temporary upholstery. So before we put the seat in, we're going to mount its brackets in first with the holes I drilled through. And to mount these, we're going to use grade 8 hardware. So grade 8 bolts are pretty higher end. Um, a lot of times they have this goldish finish, and you can tell the grade 8 because they have six dashes on the back of them. Um, so yeah, these are probably the best bolts you can get at your local hardware store, and that's what we're going to use to mount the chair in there. Okay, I'm going to weld a little bracket here on this spot, spanning three of the ribs, which is actually just about seven inches on the dot. So I'm going to cut some steel uh, L-channel and weld that on there, and then that will catch the bed as it folds down. I removed the rhino liner there using citrus strip overnight, and I'll go more detail that with the body floor panel repair video. All right, I got the area prepped, marked, and my bracket ready to weld on. So I'm going to weld on like that and use those white lines I put in there as guides to get it straight, well, straight relatively to the frame. I got one on both sides, so see how this goes. All right, so now that I got the bed fold out finally working, I'm going to throw the last two seatbelts on. You probably already saw the middle seatbelt I put on there. Luckily, this bus was not a camper bus, so it already has all the bolt points for seatbelts in the back. So we're going to go ahead and do the same uh, turquoise TLC belts to match the rest of it. All right, we got all the seatbelts in. I ended up not using the factory um, nut plates for the side seatbelts. I ended up just drilling a new hole and using a big washer that it comes up with parallel or in line with where the factory nut plate is so that's fine for now though just easier to do the little lips I put in here we're gonna add a little lip to the front side of this to catch it because it does a good job holding it level but it does want to shift forward a little bit so if we put a little lip on the front of this little tacked on there that should hold this and make it a lot more stable right, so there's the beautiful welds I made for the lip to catch the back of this guy um, it actually works pretty well you gotta put a little effort to line up as you unfold it Okay, so here is in bed form. Again, this upholstery is temporary. We're going to do a nice white and turquoise vinyl when we're all done. But it sits pretty nicely, and I'll show you a shot from the back.
Here is the back of the bed. So you can see we have, so it's pretty flush with the over engine cover and we need to make any other cushion for that so then we'll have a full bed. And here it is in the seating position with the three seat belts in it. Um, it does have a pretty far like recliner sort of angle to it. The little bracket hooks that I put in there welded on to hold in the bed position. Those actually help prop it up by like a degree or two even, which it's still pretty loungy. So it's not the greatest, but it'll do for now. So some final thoughts on this chair. Um, if I knew it was going to be this much of a pain to put together, I probably would just would have fabricated my own from scratch. Um, so yeah, don't get this unless you're handy and willing to spend a ton of time on this. This took over three weeks working, you know, a couple hours here, a couple hours there. Uh, but, you know, in the end it works. It's pretty crappy and you do get what you pay for. So probably wouldn't recommend this to anybody else. Also can't forget the jump seat we made uh, to go behind the driver. Same process as cushioning the back, but it's a mashing vintage igloo cooler.